Oh yeah, we find ourselves in the midst of another trailer apocalypse. It started with Black Widow, you heard my thoughts on that. Then we got No Time to Die, which looks pretty freaking sweet. I'm expecting another Birds of Prey trailer to drop soon. I'm not sure why it hasn't yet. We got Mulan, looks okay, Free Guy. Ghostbusters Afterlife, looks like it could be pretty cool. But of course, yesterday we got our very first trailer for Wonder Woman 1984, which means I gotta talk about it, it being a movie in the DC Extended Universe, so let's go. So yeah, Wonder Woman 1984, another movie that's really cashing in on the whole 80s nostalgia thing. Thing. At this point, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of getting sick of the whole 80s nostalgia craze. Maybe it's because I wasn't around in the 80s, I was born in the mid-90s, but I feel like I've just about had enough. For me, I think it capped at Thor Ragnarok. Like, that movie had so much 80s stuff, I'm like, alright, I, I get the point. People miss the 80s. With Thor Ragnarok and Stranger Things and now Wonder Woman, how about we move on? But that being said, there are things in this trailer that look pretty damn cool to me. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate this trailer by any means. I think it's a pretty cool trailer. It didn't blow my mind or anything, but there was nothing really bad about it. It's another Wonder Woman movie. Pedro Pascal is playing what looks like the main villain in this movie. I thought the main villain was gonna be Cheetah, but I guess not. Or at least not from the looks of this trailer. Looks like the main villain's going to be Pedro Pascal as Maxwell Lord, which yeah, Pedro Pascal, He's doing really well for himself right now. He has been crushing it as the Mandalorian, which yes, of course I've been watching it. I will do a video on it as soon as the season's over. Hell, I still wanna make a video on Titan season two. I'll get to it, okay, eventually. But yeah, he's Maxwell Lord in this movie. I've never heard of Maxwell Lord before. He looks like the Lex Luthor type, you know, he's like a businessman who puts on a good facade for the public, but you know, deep down he's a shady guy. I'm not sure what his deal is, what he's trying to achieve in this movie, I don't know. His hair is something else though, isn't it? Man, oh man, look at that thing. It's like it's alive. But then you see something's going on. Chris Pine returns as Steve Trevor. He's the exact same age, which you're like, uh, well, okay. Newsflash, he died at the end of Wonder Woman 1, which I watched last night and it's still pretty fucking good. One of the best things in that movie was the chemistry between Gal Gadot and Chris Pine. So if for nothing else, I'm glad that's gonna be back in this movie. I don't know how Steve Trevor is back. It could be one of a hundred different things. It's like Vision in WandaVision where I'm like, I don't know how he's back cause he's dead, but he's back. How, I don't know. He's got the exact same watch I do. That's pretty cool. And yeah, it looks like in this movie, the fish out of water role is going to be reversed. You know how in the first one, Diana was like the fish out of water coming from Themyscira, going into London in 1910, being like, wow, this is all new to me. What are you guys doing? You guys are weird. Now Diana's been living in the human world for many decades. And Steve Trevor, it looks like he's coming right out of 1910, being like, wow, the 80s are so different. I don't know what's what anymore. It's all art. It's, uh... That's just a trash can. It's just a trash can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, we're gonna have that good chemistry banter between Chris Pine and Gal Gadot. As long as it doesn't go overboard with the humor, I think we'll be good. But of course, the trailer doesn't stay on the funnies for too long, because then we dive right into the badass Wonder Woman action, which has always been cool to me. Minus the unnecessary slow-mo. Wonder Woman uses her lasso a lot in this trailer, and I still love the fuck out of that thing. So badass when she twirls it around and she just whips the fuck out of that guy, using it to web zip herself. I don't know why, I just love the Wonder Woman action scenes. Something about, I guess, the way they're framed, the way they're shot, the way they're choreographed. She just rips shit into thugs. It's just really entertaining for me. I don't know. I get great entertainment out of it. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Cheetah. When I first heard that Cheetah was going to be in the new Wonder Woman movie, I was psyched because I was like, yes, Cheetah to me has always been like the primary Wonder Woman villain. The arch nemesis, you know, like Joker and Batman, that kind of thing. We have never seen a live action Wonder Woman versus Cheetah Smackdown. So who do they get to play Cheetah? Well, Kristen Wiig. And I was like, Oh, really? Because, you know, Kristen Wiig, we all know, is more of a comedic actress, but I personally never really thought she was all that funny. Funniest thing she's done, in my opinion, was when she was still on SNL, and on the weekend update with Seth Meyers, she would play that politician that kept saying, just kidding, just kidding. I forget the name, but I thought that was kind of funny. Other than that, though... Eh. So her being cast as Cheetah in the new Wonder Woman movie had me going like, I just, I don't know. Maybe the casting director might have made a mistake. But hey, I'm all for being proven wrong. When Jason Momoa was originally cast as Aquaman, I wasn't sure about that either. But after the Aquaman movie, I'm like, no, Jason Momoa is completely Aquaman. My mind can be changed. I hope Kristen Wiig does a good job as the Cheetah. We don't really see her as Cheetah in this trailer though. We see her as Barbara Ann Minerva. And in her little interview scene with Gal Gadot, I was like, eh, well, you know, whatever. Not the strongest point of the trailer to me. However, there's one point in the trailer where you see fireworks and then you see Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor in a jet and I'm like, 
Are they in the invisible jet? Yeah, for those of you who don't know, one of Wonder Woman's like trademark things is that she has an invisible jet, which I always thought was kind of cartoony and I wasn't sure about them bringing it into a live action movie. But then I thought about it, Marvel has like cloaking technology for their helicarriers and stuff in their live action stuff. You know, Spider-Man Homecoming, the plane had cloaking technology. It didn't seem cartoony in there. So if Marvel can pull it off, I'm pretty sure DC will be able to pull it off with Wonder Woman's trademark vehicle, the invisible jet, which is another badass trademark thing that they can bring into a live action Wonder Woman movie, like the boomerang tiara and the lasso of truth and the invisible jet. Dude, this is freaking Wonder Woman and it gets me really excited. Her outfit really pops too. I really like that. It's really colorful. The, the colors really pop out at you, which makes sense. You know, the 80s colors were a really vibrant thing in the 80s, according to the posters anyway. Neon was a big deal, along with, of course, the 80s music jam. Blue Monday by New Order. We all know the song. How does it feel? I love the remix of the song that was used in this trailer. It's like orchestral mixed with those 80s synths. It worked in this trailer. But that's also where I feel like the tone is going to be very different from the first movie because the first movie was like a war period piece. So it's like we've gone from war drama to 80s comedy. Yeah, it does feel like kind of a strange jump. I mean, I know it will have been three years since the first Wonder Woman movie, but still. And then, of course, the end of the trailer brings us some really badass shit. Wonder Woman using her lasso to swing on freaking lightning bolts? I thought Spider-Man swinging around the city was cool. This is like if Spider-Man were a goddess. Yeah. Yeah, pretty neat. And then at the very end, we see that gold suit that we've seen on the teaser poster for a while now. But now we see it has wings, which, yeah, first thing I thought when I saw it was she looks like Hawk Girl, because the wings look really similar to Hawk Girl from Justice League. Not that I'm complaining, it looks really cool. And hey, maybe there will be like an Easter egg or something. Maybe there will be like a Hawk Girl tie-in thing. Maybe it'll plant the seeds for an upcoming Hawk Girl movie or something. I don't know. That would be pretty cool since I really don't know the first thing about Hawk Girl. In the end, this trailer, like I said, it didn't really blow my mind. I was never like, oh my god, that is the coolest thing ever. Because really this trailer didn't show me anything I haven't seen before. Badass Wonder Woman action, 80s nostalgia. I've seen both before. But yeah, the other side of that is that there's nothing really bad about this trailer. I didn't have a problem with anything. It still looks really cool, just not new. I am looking forward to this movie. At this point, I'm not sure what I'm gonna like more, this or Birds of Prey. But DC having the ladies lead their films next year? Looks like we got some girl power going. And as long as they don't shove the feminism down our throats like Charlie's Angels did, that just doesn't sound like a bad thing. So, the first official trailer for Wonder Woman 1984. Have you watched it yet? What did you think about it? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And, don't forget to subscribe.